Hey there, this is Jonathan with pureandsimplebible.com and this is a behind the scenes video for a resource that I use whenever I do Bible study. And so I wanted to share it with others as well um, who might uh, be interested in using it. I, I prefer studying with an open book. and Maybe you do too. There's something about having that source right in front of you that's really nice. But what I really like about eSword and other programs like it is um, that you're able to take it with you anywhere and you don't have to have an internet connection. When I lived in Southeast Asia, sometimes we would have rolling blackouts or brownouts and so having a digital library where you don't have to log on to the internet is something that's really helpful. So whether you got a laptop, a phone, there's a lot of different ways that you can use uh, eSort and so think about that, that you can have thousands of dollars worth of resources for free uh, in this download. Now some of them do cost money but most of it is absolutely free, and so you're able to gain a digital library instantly that's really going to enhance your Bible study methods. So down in the bottom of my screen, um, I'll just open up the eSword like that. And uh, anyway, um, maybe I'll give you a, a rundown. On this left side, you've got all your Bible books. You've got to click on the book, and you've got to click on the chapter, and then that will flesh out uh, the whole Bible chapter for you right there, and you can just scroll up and down. Now, you've got all your Bible translations, and most of these are free, but uh, New American Standard, and let's see, what else did I have to purchase? New King James, I think I had to purchase those two, and the rest of those in my library came absolutely free. Um, a really neat feature about the Bible part, uh, you know, most software programs might have a compare where you can compare a single verse in all of your translations. You've also got parallels where it visually puts them next to each other verse by verse. And you can see here I've got the King James English Standard and the easy to read version that I can then read through the chapter that way in a parallel Bible. But what's really neat is they offer the King James Plus. If you want the New American Standard, uh, if you purchase that, it also comes with a plus where it shows you Strong's numbers. Strong's is a concordance and each word they cataloged it so that you can find where that word was used in Greek or in Hebrew. So uh, if I wanted to look up, let's just say the word God in Greek is Strong's G2316, that's Theos. I click on it, and uh, down here, at least it should, yeah, there we go. Down here in my dictionary section, it pops up some things that I might be interested in. So that means I have to go down to the second section and talk about that for a moment. Um, there are things you can download. Most of them are free. Uh, I've got the New American Standard Exhaustive Concordance that came along with that purchase that I, brought, I bought, but also Strong's and Thayer's, I believe, are both free. I also purchased Vine's New Testament and Old Testament words, but it gives you just the Greek word, its English equivalent, and then the definition of it, and Thayer gives you some excellent definitions as well. But if I wanted to, you know, find, well, where this word is all throughout the scripture. So all I, all I have to do is right click on it, do a quick search for G2316 over the entire Bible, and it pops up a window where I'm searching through all the scriptures where that Greek word G2316 uh, comes up. And I bet it's gonna be a whole lot. Yeah, we've got 1172 verses, 1343 matches. And so it just shows me all the times that that word comes up and then you're able to just cross-reference uh, all of the different ways and contexts that the word God is used. So maybe if I did one that was less uh, used than God, if I said, in the beginning was the word, and I want to look up the Greek word for word, the logos, and we'll find that uh, this is probably going to be in the Bible a lot. Yep, 316 times across 330 verses, but now. So yeah, that can really help you look up words, and you'll find that a lot of times, uh, for example, uh, if we're looking up logos, you'll see that it's used and translated differently. Communication, sayings, word, uh, so the account. So this will help you flesh out, if, especially if you're a beginner um, on some of your word studies. Now, uh, so we've already talked some about the dictionaries down here. So that really goes in conjunction with the Bible uh, section that you have up here. Over here uh, are your commentaries, and then down here is places where you can write in notes. I don't like to do that, and so I can go over here to hide, and I can hide it over here on this side of the 
a program. But if you really like to take notes, you could have that digital note in there. But all of these, uh, if they have a little blue icon next to them, means they have a thought on John chapter 1, verse 1. And I can choose to look at it on a verse level, on the chapter level, or on the book level as well. And, you know, I would recommend, especially if you're a beginner Bible student, that you find uh, a preacher or an elder or somebody, maybe one of your parents who's uh, spent a lot of time in the scriptures and understands that commentaries really should be used at the end of the process and not at the beginning of the process. When you get that and you don't rely on commentaries, but rather you're using them to help uh, prove or validate what you're already studying, or showing you, maybe raising some red flags that uh, you've kind of gone off on your own path and you might need to reconsider what you're studying. Anyway, I use them at the end of my study. I never start with commentaries because these are just men's thoughts. And I want to make sure that I'm studying the Bible and not men's thoughts. Now, yours won't look like this whenever you download it. Um, you are going to go first, if you're going to download this, to esword.net. So let's check it out. So here you are at esword.net. And you would go to uh, download, and you would download the eSword, um, uh, I guess, desk application. And once you've downloaded it, uh, then you would open it up here. But if you wanted to add content, there's one of two ways to do it. First, you go to your download section, and you can choose to download anything that comes standard on the eSword uh, application. And so I can go here and it has English, but check it out, especially for your friends who speak other languages. There's also Bibles in different languages. You've got French and German. You have Greek Bibles, uh, Hebrew. There is even for whenever I lived in Cambodia, uh, there should have been. No, it's not on here. We had to download it from uh, esword.net. There's a Kamai Bible. You'll see up here I have the old Kamai standard version. And so they do make a lot of translations available um, other than English. But all you would do is uh, you would click on it. So let's say I'm going to choose, uh, well, which one do I want to choose? Let's just say the Revised Standard Version. It comes down here to the bottom, and all i got to do, oh, where'd it go? Oh, it automatically downloaded it. Huh. I guess I have that feature to download. And I didn't even want those i got to figure out what to do whenever they come up, because I don't necessarily want those Bibles. Anyway, uh, commentaries. The way, the way I was familiar with the app was you had a little download button. It looks like you just click on the hyperlink now, and it'll download it for you. Uh, anyway, you, you can do the same with commentaries. Find the ones that you want and download those. The same with dictionaries. They also have uh, some other books, devotions. They've got graphics, so you could look at maps. Actually, that looks pretty interesting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, download the maps. And I'll probably give a few more of those a, a look here in a little bit. And then you've got different reference books, just old books from antiquity, things that are in the public domain. It is legal, right? So it's stuff in the public domain and uh, people who've given their permission, etc. It's not stuff that's pirated, um, at least for the vast majority that I'm familiar with. Anyway, so you can download those reference books and there'll be a... And that's just telling you you've got to start and restart your app for it to use the stuff. Now, back over here on eSword. Uh, let's see. There's another website you go to. And I'm trying to remember what it is. Oh, yeah. Check this out real quick. It is available on your Mac, your iPad, etc., and um, you've got to buy it for the phone for the the Macintosh stuff. Well, that one just says download, so maybe you're able to get it for free. I got it on my phone for free, and I've got an iPhone. Another website you can go to that has eSword modules and it has a ton of them, a ton of them, is BibleSupport.com. Up in the right side, you do have to create an account, but once you create an account with them. You have access to all of their digital commentaries, dictionaries, Bible translations, etc. Stuff that's um, either been given copyright permission and or uh, it's in the public domain. As, as far as I understand, the vast majority of their stuff works that way. Anyway, you would um, just 
once you're logged in, you would click on it. And just for the sake of the example, let's say I wanted this one, then I would download the uh, pulpit commentary set. And, you know, I'll be logged in and it would download. And all you would have to do is close your eSword app and reopen your eSword app. And that commentary from the BibleSupport.com website will automatically find its way into your library. I know that more than half of my commentaries came from BibleSupport.com, including the College Press and, and a few other ones as well. So, anyway, that's just an introduction to eSword, and I hope it was helpful. Um, I really think that any Bible student is going to benefit from having this, and I hope that uh, now that you've kind of seen it, it's a little bit less daunting than maybe if you'd gone through by yourself. So step one is to download the eSword application. Step two is to go to Bible Support and find any additional modules that you want to have because eSword does have some modules and a module could be a translation of a Bible, it could be a dictionary, it could be a commentary. So the module are different things. Or, or uh, Bible Support's modules can be added to your library simply by making a username and password, downloading them, and then it'll pop right into your eSword library. Now, the final thing I'll just show you real quick is this is uh, one of the biggest time savers I have is uh, copying and pasting. And so let's say I want to share John chapter 1 through 10. I have to highlight all of those, and I can do copy verse. It's the third option there. And you have the ability, all these different formats, but instead of, let me open a Word document to show you the plight that some people have whenever they try to copy paste from a, a digital um, or an online format. So let's cancel this real quick. Say I want to get all 10 of those verses, right? And I open my Word document here, copy paste, ugh, all of the verses are in there at the same time. How in the world do I get rid of those? Well, eSword gives you the option to copy the verses and there's several different formats. The sixth one is the one I like, but you can test out how you want them to look. But uh, anyway, just hit copy, go back to your Word document, paste, and check out the difference there. They've got the verses for you in parentheses. And so that, that's helpful for me whenever I'm writing notes. So this video is very instructional and informative and probably a lot of rambling, but I do hope it was helpful. I hope you have a great day and that your Bible studies go well.